Good morning, good afternoon, and Shana Tova. I hope you all are having a wonderful and meaningful Yantif so far and taking in this opportunity to do some Cheshbon Hanefesh, some soul reflection. It's a treat to be with you. Those of you I don't know, I'm Rabbi Allison Solomon and I'm your uh, rabbi educator here at Beth Israel and it's such a treat to be with you. We're gonna do a little bit of Yom Kippur practice and I invite you if you have a mat to get a mat, whatever is comfortable for you to sit on. I also have a blanket nearby and if you have or want some water nearby, that also is welcome. We're gonna do about a 45 minute practice together. So um, if it is new to you, just be gentle with your body and uh, really allow your body to be that shofar um, that you listen to and take cues from so that you stay safe and um, and at the same time active and activated. So we'll start with a um, lotus position, just um, our feet um, on our laps or flat out in front of you. You can also do this practice from a chair if you'd like. Just make sure that your seat bones are rooted fully in the seat in equal um, kind of weight and pressure. So you might wanna lift yourself off with your hands um, sort of tented out and just make sure that you are sitting in the middle of your seat. Great, and then bring that uh, foot up or again, you can leave those feet flat on the ground, uh, extended one on top of each other, whatever works best for your posture. Great, to give you a nice stable base. We'll start with our palms on the tops of our kneecaps making a nice triangle position, allowing our spine to naturally extend up. Just take a moment in your own being to arrive. You might wanna wiggle your tailbone just slightly to root your, root your tail, and then also just gently elongating your neck, uh, your crown. Notice the way that our bodies can be a bridge between heaven and earth. We'll take a few cleansing breaths here, just allowing the body's air to begin to circulate, all of our muscles to take in that oxygen, lymph nodes to begin to move and groove in our bodies, feeling cleansed and refreshed. So big inhale in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth, allowing that uh, slight constriction in the back of our throat to, as we exhale, uh, allow ourselves just to whisper just a little bit. Good, one more. And last one, feeling ourselves, ourselves breathed through. Nice oxygen, oxygenating, oxygenating the blood. Great, refreshing our spirits. And then chin coming gently towards the chest. Just allowing almost the imagery of a waterfall or uh, a shower just gently coming over your head and down your back here just for a moment. You might have been sitting a lot today or um, fasting or just um, you know going through your souls. Just allow this moment to bring whatever healing or restoration you might need. Great, opening the jaw towards the chest. Open mouth there. Again, just feeling that water flow over your head, down your back. We're gonna follow this gesture a little bit 
leaning forward, allowing our hearts to glide gently forward and up towards the sky. Good, and you might notice your shoulders elongating and dropping away from your ears, that's perfect. And you might even feel your elbows begin to just naturally float back. Great, and then the opposite gesture, elbows coming in towards the middle of the body. And as you look towards your belly, nice exhale out. Good, and chin returns to the chest. And then at your own tempo, we're just gonna do some rocking back and forth in that same way, leading through the heart, elbows float back. And scooping in, great, and looking towards our belly buttons. We're off, we will offer a song for gratitude. And here we can uh, pick if we want to use Mode or Moda. Modim anachnu. Moda ani lefanecha. Ruachai ve kayam. Shehezarta. Finish mati vehemla. Vehemla. Rabba emuna teha. Rabba emuna teha. Good. And just lean forward, allowing the fingertips to table tent behind you, bringing your spine into further engagement here. Again, making sure your seat is flat on the earth, using those fingertips leaning those elbows in towards one another and lifting the heart here just for a moment. Good. Finding your strength, finding your grace, grace, finding your gaze. And if you'd like to soften those elbows and just gently float back, so just bring yourself into a little bit of a gentle rocking right here. And your gaze can be up at the sky, straight out in front of you, or down towards the mat. Good, and just focus for a second inward on that sense of gratitude. What is it that you might be feeling just at this very moment? It might be gratitude, it might be exhaustion, it might be hunger, it might be clarity. Just whatever it is, allow that to gently be present, almost rest on your heart. Great. And perhaps just imagine a color of that feeling any color that comes first to your mind's eye. Great. And we'll come back to that color throughout our practice. Let's go ahead and bring our hands in palms, weighted almost like they're holding a pomegranate in each hand, weighted out to either side of us. Bring some nice uh, weight into those hands to activate inside of the arms and stretch them out on either side of you, feeling your, your neck elongate, shoulders soften, chest and belly tuck. Good, and then gently we're gonna bring those palm, pomegranates out and up towards one another. So first just gently stretching them out and away from our bodies. Notice the rotation of the thumbs right there. You might wanna rotate a little bit further back have those thumbs be straight up. Just play around a little bit with the fluidity of your rotator cuff. Great, and then we'll bring those palms up to meet one another. Great, and you might just want to hold them 
sort of counter opposed to each other, a beach ball holding that beach ball style, or you might want to bring them to touch. I'm going to have them at beach ball style because I find it softens my neck and keeps my shoulders relaxed. Great, and then we're going to gently bow forward, offer that offering. And you can go all the way down, putting your, placing your hands on the ground. If you want at any point to unfurl your feet and allow your feet to come uh, to a flat position, you're welcome to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and lean forward here with that modim bow, with that prayerful from the waist bow. So just everyone, Coming in, your hands are like starfish spread out onto the carpet or mat or ground in front of you. And you're reaching forward through each one of those fingers, almost like you can imagine light coming through them, and also back through your back hip pockets. Good, nice, gentle uh, arrow being formed here in the arc of your back. So. It's almost like you could um, place a, uh, I don't know what you would place that would be at a slope, <laughs> but you could roll a ball just magically down your spine from your crown all the way to your tail. Right, and then perhaps open up the inside of your arms so that instead of having your um, elbow, the, the soft part of your elbow, the inside of your elbows face one another, see if they can face up towards the sky. So we're rotating our arms from uh, the inside of our elbows facing each other to having those insides face the sky. So just a gentle opener here. You might wanna go ahead and lift your thumbs and press and engage your pinkies. So you're lifting your palms and pressing and engaging your pinkies. Great, and you'll notice the way that that naturally draws your elbows down towards the ground, almost like a crouch position. Good job, everybody. And here we're gonna just offer a few lion's breaths here to stimulate the breath through the head space and heart space. Uh, we've been activating our upper body, so let's just flush it out. So we'll take a nice inhale through our nose and then exhale really roaring out through the mouth. Beautiful job, everybody. Good, and from there you might want to allow the elbows to come down onto, onto the ground uh, and allow yourself to come more into a full uh, bow position, bringing your forearms to the ground and pressing off there with the fullness of your hands. Just leaning forward. You can drop your gaze if you like towards your belly or towards the earth and just feel some relief here and some release. Our backs are working so hard in our arms and shoulders and our texting fingers. Just give it all a break. Beautiful. And then just gently engaging those hands, pressing off those hands to bring yourself back up to a seated posture. We're gonna go ahead and uncurl the legs. Some of you might have been waiting for that for a long time. Uh, and bringing our legs out to an extended position. So here again, if you are in a chair, you can um, simply cross, cross your legs or bring one leg on top of the other. If you're on the ground, this right leg can be tucked in or even further out from your body. 
either uh, either kind of iteration is great and welcome. And from here, we're going to first find our stability here. We're expanding our seat upon which we're sitting. So I invite you to go ahead and put the inside of your palms on both the right kneecap and on the inside of the left knee. So just find whatever position gives you sort of a, a pressing off point to get nice and tall here. Again, enjoying the expansiveness in our bodies, the rootedness into the earth and the elevation and lift into the heavens. Great. And we'll draw that left toe in towards our bodies here. So bringing some nice dynamism, beginning shifting the energy from our core space into our lower body. So I invite you to uh, take your two long fingers, pointer and middle finger. And if you'd like, go ahead and uh, grab onto that middle or big toe. If you want to rest your hand on your shin on the left side, you're welcome to do that. If you want to grab the outside of your left foot, you can do that. So whatever position feels the most uh, comfortable and interesting to you, I'm actually going to grab the outside of my foot and put my thumb uh, between my first and second toes. Great. And then from here, bringing that leg in towards the body, your left kneecap coming down towards your shin or on the inside of your knee is also fine and really feels pretty yummy. And then gently taking that opposite hand, that right hand, finding that pomegranate to bring some weight and dynamism to the opposite um, part of your body so that there's some nice uh, pull and also at the same time some balance brought. And we're going to lift that hand, right hand up overhead and gently bring it down towards that left extended toe. So here you're, you're just making an arc and you can slow it down or speed it up. The idea is really reaching out and then gently up and over. So if you want to just try that a few times, you might feel you know, a way in which that really brings some nice fluidity to your body. Great. And then when you'd like, go ahead and rest towards that left toe. And just stay here for a moment, enjoying the feeling of being at rest and at the same time activated through your body, through your muscles. Nice big breath here, allowing the breath to perhaps take you slightly deeper into the posture. And then reversing that pose, taking that pomegranate that you had and arcing it towards that toe and then up overhead and using it as a lever to bring you up to the opposite side. And again, just take a few swishes at that, bringing yourself up and out of the posture. Nice fluidity in our movements here. Enjoying the breath, enjoying the ability to move and to breathe together and to pray together. And then we'll switch sides. So going ahead and bringing that left foot um, across your body. If, again, if you're sitting in a chair. Um, so if you're sitting in a chair, this leg would be down on the ground and this one would be up on your lap or um, curled up literally into the chair in front of you. Um, being on the ground, it's just going to be about three inches um, away from my body. 
And then looking towards that right toe and the possibility, and it might be, of course, we, as we know, one side could be more flexible than the other, but looking towards that right toe, giving it some love and reaching in whatever manner. And again, hand on the shin, hand on the foot itself, the outside of the foot, wherever feels uh, interesting to you. And we're just going to uh, follow the same pattern. So really first engaging that foot. Notice the way that you pulling on that foot or even just elevating that toe towards your nose. You're activating the back of the leg, but you can also engage the front of your leg, right? So the back of your leg, the energy is really moving from your hip to your toe. And then the front of the leg, the energy is often moving from your toe back to your hip. So there's a nice uh, circle of flow there in what's called Anusara Yoga, the style of yoga that I studied. So reaching towards, towards that toe and that toe reaching towards you. Another beautiful uh, moment to consider the way in which we are both seeking God and God is seeking us. And allowing that elbow or hand to come on the inside of the leg, whatever feels comfortable for you. And engaging there the opposite hand, our left hand, find that nice weighted pomegranate to bring some counterbalance to this tension of opposites. Feeling some weight in that hand, extending it out to the side. And with your gaze following that pomegranate, out, 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 up, 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 over, over, over. Beautiful. And then softening that gesture and doing it a few more times in your own unique way. Out, 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 up, 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 over, over, over. Beautiful. Let's do one more. Ah, wonderful job, everybody. Just becoming aware of all of the ways, all of the miraculous ways that our bodies can, can move, especially at this season. We're going to come up into um, tabletop now to sort of hop off our tushies a little while and bring some activation to um, our hips. So just as we come into tabletop, I invite you to, um, if you are on your ch in a chair, you can simply do a version of tabletop by standing behind your chair and um, leaning forward. So um, essentially you would uh, have your chair behind you. Great, and coming into sort of a modified tabletop, uh, your feet are spread almost, um, I would say, three quarters of your body's length away from the feet of the chair, and your back here becomes flat. So just find whatever um, position works best for you, um, but here you can do the equivalent of what we're about to do on, on our mats. So if you are on your mats, your hands and feet are equi, or hands and knees are about equidistant. Um, there's some nice space, probably about a hip width space between both your hands and your knees. And the back itself becomes like a tabletop. So you want to bring some nice strength and evenness to your tabletop. And if this is in any way pressure on your wrists, you can go ahead and make fists uh, or dolphin hands coming on to um, your forearms and pressing down with your hands. So find a comfortable hand position for you. You won't stay here for hours but allow yourself to feel some nice stability between all 
four limbs. And feel your creatureliness perhaps here, your animalness. Great. And just um, go ahead and begin to rock almost like we're doing the box step uh, to each corner of our mat or each corner of our body. So it's just tracing the corners that we've created with our, with our movement here. So I'm at my back right and back left, left front, right front, back right, left right left front, right front. And then just coming into a neutral spine here, neutral position. We'll do a few cat cows here and you might want to tuck your toes underneath your body at this point or have your shoelaces fully pressed into the earth, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, as we do some cat cows, which are basically uh, movements of the spine, bringing some fluidity through the spine, arching up like a cat, looking towards that belly button. Nice exhale here, letting everything go. And then inhale, allowing the heart to rise and the tail to rise. Beautiful. Your gaze can also lift right here. Give yourself a bit of an eye massage. Looking towards the belly, elongating through the backs of the scapulas, lifting up off those wrists, okay, and releasing tail rises, heart rises. Good, and on your own count, looking towards the belly, Looking towards the sky and belly, sky, beautiful job everybody. If at any point you want to come back and rest, dropping back onto your knees, we'll all do this because I'm halfway there. Uh, so I invite you to either keep your knees spread out coming into what's called frog pose or to have your knees parallel to one another. I'm gonna go into frog, knees coming out wide at a V. Good, and body dropping in between. Great, and if you want to rest your cappy, your forehead down to the earth here for a second, feel free, allowing the ground to hold you. And then before we get too uncomfortable, <laughs> they're coming, lifting ourselves back, back up here. And I'll invite us to just uh, point our hands, both hands coming towards the upper right hand part of our mat. So I would say at, uh, at one o'clock on the clock, allow your, your hands to jut out to one o'clock and your tushy to jut back to about 6.30, if we were also on that clock. And feel the nice elongation here on the left side of the body. You can even look underneath your left armpit if you're so inclined. So really reaching towards that right side of the mat with our both hands and this hip reaching out and back behind us. And then that gaze underneath the armpit, further bringing a nice gentle rotation to the spine. Big breath there. And then tiptoe those hands towards the middle of the mat, stretching back again, perhaps a little bit of more of your chest or heart reaching towards the ground. 
and then hands coming over to the left side of the mat. So here we're at sort of 11 o'clock with our arms and our hips are coming uh, to about five o'clock or 4.30, right? And here you might look underneath your right armpit and bring some rotation to all parts of your spine here. Great work, everybody. And then scoot your hands back, gently walking yourself back up to a neutral tabletop position, bringing those knees in together. And um, we will begin to um, prepare, not quite yet, but get closer anyway to Shavasana. So I invite you to sit with your feet nice and long, we're gonna come into what's called fish pose. So legs are nice and long and you might give them a nice little massage. They've been working hard underneath you. And you allow those toes to stretch and expand out. Great. And then we'll go ahead and um, point the toes away from the body. So if you're back in your chairs, at this point you would extend your feet long out in front of your chair and then I would say um, allow your hands to almost um, be on the back if this was all the seat of the chair to come back on the seat behind you and just point those toes out uh, from the chair that you're sitting on. And then we're gonna go ahead and the, if those of you who are on the ground, um, coming back into fish pose, this is a very gentle one. So you can um, uh, go ahead and imagine you have back pockets and put your hands in your back pockets, uh, right on your bum, your lower, lower back, and use the palms of your palms, that nice hard, hard bone to press into um, the top of what would be your back pockets. So sort of in between where your kidneys, kidneys and lower intestine and your glute muscle. It feels good to just rub there for a little while. And then you're, um, we're gonna go ahead and have those hands underneath our tushies. Toes are nice and long and pointed. And then we're gonna gently wander our way back down onto the mat. And our forearms are underneath us. So just enjoy this nice fish pose here. And again, digging those palms underneath into your upper tushy, lower back. And here you can just stay almost like you're lounging in your own lounge chair by the pool. Or for those of you who want, you can um, push deeper your palms into your tush and bring your head and your upper body um, towards your crown. So this is a bit of a complicated um, move, but basically your lower body is going down and your upper body is going up. Da -da -da -da. You're pressing into your tushy and scooching your upper body up. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome lower back stretch. And if at any point you wanna take those hands out from underneath, you're invited to. And we can go ahead and bring our knees up towards our bodies. <laughs> Great. And if you have a blankie nearby for your puppy, that's a nice little treat right here. We'll just do some rocking side to side here, uh, bringing some massage to the large intestine and the lower back. Knees can be spread out wide. You can hold your toes in happy baby pose. Um, 
grabbing on using those big two fingers to grab onto the big toes and elevating those toes above you or just holding your knees in your hands and elevate soles to the sky. Great, so whatever feels good, take a, a few rounds of this. Great, and then ooh, we're gonna come into eventually a nice Shavasana opportunity. So I invite you to um, Find your space. I'm going to actually guide you through this um, Shavasana. And if those of you who want to sit up can do that in your chair, those of you who want to lay down can do that in your chair or do that on the ground. And we're going to just conclude our practice with a meditation on the letters. So invite you to settle in, to simmer in, whatever unfurling you need to do. If you need to go into shoulder stand or um, do some cross body stretches to uh, relax your spine, take a, take a few moments, a few cycles to do whatever concluding postures you'd like. And then we'll meet together either in Shavasana, totally on the mat flat, um, or with the pillow or blanket, wherever you'd like, or seated up in our chairs. And once you find your Shavasana, vertical or horizontal, we're going to conclude with a meditation on the letters themselves, the letters of God's name, one of God's names, the unpronounceable names, including the letters Yud, He, and Vav, He. The Yud being the smallest letter, and it invite us to map that Yud. This looks like a, an apostrophe on our foreheads to our nose. And you can trace it if you'd like with your hand or just see it in your mind's eye. Just that little yud. And even if you don't know what the actual letter looks like, it doesn't matter. Just draw a little swoosh uh, between your eyes. That's our yud. Let's take a big inhale there and exhale that yud. And then with the other hand, if you'd like to use your hands, otherwise just your mind's eye, I'm gonna go ahead and stroke or just gently rub that opposite arm. I'm rubbing my right arm with my left hand. It's one side of the hay, a little opening at the shoulder. And then that hay comes across my chest and enfolds my other arm. So that's a hay. Sort of up one arm across the chest and down the other arm. Nice breath there. And then the vav is the core, that ladder between heaven and earth. So invite us to feel that vav extend from our throat chakra, the center of our, where our head meets our hearts, all the way down our chest, through our belly to our between our hips to our groin, right? That's our vav. Just go ahead and notice your vav, both on the front of your body, but also on the back of your body. That spine being our constant vav, constant connector. And big breath there. 
And then with our lower body, in the same way that we did the hay, on uh, through our arms, tracing it up one arm across our chest and down the other arm, we're gonna do that on our legs. So whatever position you're in, rubbing or just following with your eye, one leg across your hips and then down the other leg. One more time. And cross the hips and down that other leg. And then finding yourself into the most delicious, relaxing, unfurled position possible, whatever that looks like for you. And we're gonna take these letters just through our breath. Inhaling the yud. Exhaling the vav. Or excuse me, the hay. Inhaling the vav. And exhaling the hay. Inhaling the yud. Exhaling the hay. Inhaling the vav. Exhaling the hay. Yud, hey, vav, hey, yud, hey, vav, hey, one more. Hey. Hey. And we'll gently take our palms together and make a bit of heat, a bit of fire. And place that heat on your body wherever you'd like it, on your eyes or your heart or your belly or your knees or your nose. And allow that color of experience that you were feeling at the beginning of our practice to return again Noticing the temperature of that color, the taste of that color, the sight and smell, most of all the feeling, the touch. And we'll take three cleansing breaths together, inhaling through our nose and exhaling through our mouth, and then saying Shema together. And as we say Shema, the opportunity is really to listen to it. It's the same intention really as the shofar itself. The mitzvah is to hear the shofar. So let's listen to our 
collective Shema and see what we hear. Shema. Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad And a gentle bow to you, our own precious hearts, and to one another's precious hearts, and to the ultimate precious heart that holds all of our hearts. I wish you a sweet and healthy and meaningful rest of the Yamim Noraim, these days of awe and wonder. And thank you so much for practicing with me today. Shana Tobah.